Hello everyone and welcome to the new episode of the Dark Table. In this episode I would like to show you how to deal with photos that have quite huge differences between shadows and highlights. Uh, and the problem with uh, such photos is uh, that you are not able to display those differences in our screen because uh, our screens can only display the brightest differences about 8 or 9 exposure values and our cameras have much bigger dynamic range they can capture the brightness differences about 14 or 15 uh, exposure values and dark table has a quite sophisticated tools and techniques which can be used to compress that high dynamic range of the camera so that you are able to see the details in shadows and in the highlights in the screen and I will like to show you in this episode how to do that. We will start with this photo because I think this photo is quite suitable for the demonstration and I must say that photographer has done a quite good job not to overexpose highlights and I will highly recommend if you have such scene with quite big difference between highlights and shadows not to overexpose the highlights because if you do that uh, highlights needs to be reconstructed you don't have any data there and that could be quite difficult but in this case uh, we have uh, on the exposed photo which is okay because we have enough data in this uh, dark area that can be used for brightening that area and we only need to see how we can brighten that area without losing the details in the highlights so oh, let's do that so I would like to disable filmic first so that we can recognize the brightness of the row file without further adjustments and I will also like to set the waveform vertical because that can help us to visualize w what is going on with the brightness in the photo and as you can see you can see uh, we have that spike here that is our window and the rest cannot be shown because the dynamic range of our screen which is demonst uh, which is uh, uh, shown here in our waveform is not so big as our camera so that means our camera has a much larger dynamic range let's say something like that here are the shadows and here are the highlights <clears throat> and to be able to see the details in the shadows we need to brighten those areas which cannot be uh, uh, displayed in the screen so to um, show you that um, schematic a little bit better we have this situation that is now our dynamic range of our camera which is quite huge uh, just like real quick we don't need to be so so precise <clears throat> here are the shadows and here are the highlights and in these highlights we have the window and here we have the room what we see here according to this kind of somatic we can only display this part this is the screen uh, screen dynamic range <coughs> so you have shadows and highlights no now first what you need to do is to shift those shadows of dynamic range of our camera to be able to see the details shift to the right so we can do that with exposure module now I will do that in watch please what is going on here in the waveform when I do that 
Now I'm shifting that up about four EVs. Now we can see clearly what is going on in the background. We now see the details there. Uh, and our uh, photo is quite bright now, but we have lost a lot of details in the, sh in the highlight highlights. So practically what we have done here is following. We have now that, no, let's, let's do that this way. It's our dynamic range of our screen now. And we have shifted the dynamic range of our camera to the right. And window part in the highlights is gone. We cannot display it now. So how to deal with that? We can, how can we improve our photo so that we can see the details in the highlights or to get these details in the highlights back, but not to lose the brightness of the photo? Now I will paint again our schematics real quick. So let's say something like that. That is our dynamic range of the camera and dynamic range of our screen is, I will say something like there. So we have only this part. We can see now only this part. So we see the room clearly, but we have lost uh, highlights in the window. And now we can enable Filmic again, because Filmic can help us to compress the highlights and shadows. And as you can see, uh, we have some change. I'll disable it, I'll enable it again. And we have something like that with default setting of Filmic. So we have our camera dynamic range again and our screen dynamic range there. And uh, Filmic has uh, relieved the compression from the shadows and compressed a little bit the highlights here, something like that. So we have got some of the highlights back, but not too much. And we have lost some details in the shadows. So it's practically a little bit shifted from the default setting in, uh, of, the, of the brightness without filming. To be able to show you that um, you can you, we can use this schematic. If you scroll here with this uh, icon there, you can go, you can get this one. And you can see uh, the bottom part is our dynamic range of the camera, only a part. And upper part is dynamic range of our screen. And as you can see, uh, the Filmic has done some compression in the highlights. These are the highlights here, but not enough. So let's go back and paint that real quick. So we have Filmic here. Uh, uh, we have a dynamic range of our screen here. And Filmic has done something like that. So we have this part here displayed on our screen. And now when we go to the scene tab on the Filmic, we can compress the highlights and shadows individually. Now I would like to compress the highlights. That means to bring those details they have lost in the highlights back. And watch what is happening here in this area. When I move a white relative exposure. And you can see with white relative exposure, the filmic has brought back quite a lot of the area in the highlights, but that area is quite high compressed. You see, we have almost four or five EVs here compressed in almost only the half 
of the last EV of the screen. So we have something like that. Dynamic range of our camera. Dynamic range of our screen. And Filmic has done something like that. Brought back our highlights, but all of that area where we have a window is compressed only there in this part. <clears throat> so therefore we have the details in the uh, in the window but uh, they are quite high compressed and we lose that local contrast there. Now we can also improve a little bit um, the other part of the dynamic range so we can also add some compression in the shadows so we can see even better the details there. And now we have uh, practically brought back, you can see also here, the data from the highlights and data from the shadows in our dynamic range of the screen, but we have lost the details there. And now we need to look what can be done to improve that. The first thing what can be done is to go to the look tab and relieve a little bit of compression in highlights for example. Now if I move shadow highlights balance slider to the to the right you can see that this uh, mid part, that latitude part, has shifted to the shadows. So that means that uh, compression the highlights is not so high. Or opposite, I can relieve the compression from the shadows and tighten the compression in the highlights. So in this case I would like to do opposite here. So I don't want to have too much compression in the highlights. We're practically moving that mid part, that uh, mid gray part, so to say, toward the shadows. Okay, now we have improved filmic, but we need, let me see, we need a little bit more details in the highlights and how to do that. Before we are going any further, I forgot to mention two important things and first is uh, that mid-gray part. Many of people have difficulties to understand what means mid-gray and the actually it's nothing special, it's not some special value that you need to achieve. You need just to eyeball the brightness of your photo and the mid-gray area is practically that area where you can see those important areas in your photos quite clearly. They need to be bright enough to be able to see all details. That is your mid-gray area. So uh, the only thing that you need to do is to go to exposure, as I have done in this case. I just wanted to see bit more details in the walls here in the room so I added some exposure until I'm satisfied with the brightness of that area and that's my middle gray area. So <clears throat> this middle gray area is now here in the, this part and I will say uh, my room here is approximately somewhere here a little bit to the darker side but it's enough bright so that uh, we can see enough details <coughs> excuse me and the second thing is uh, as you can see that mid gray area is not compressed too much so that we have that nice contrast here but sometimes you can also adjust that contrast there in the look tab so you can lower it and that will can help uh, to mitigate those high compressions areas in uh, on the edges in the shadows and in the highlights so in some cases it makes sense to uh, remove that contrast there but i will leave it in this case because we can deal with our highlights and shadows another way and um, let's go to that 
point now. Now we have adjusted the filmic as best as we can but I still want to get some details in the highlights so I need to somehow to influence only that highlights area here without touching anything else I need to darken it a little bit so that uh, that area comes to that mid gray here and uh, will not be too much influenced by the compression so that we can clearly see even more details there and how to do that <coughs> I could use exposure module in a new instance for example and mask that area and darken it but there is a, a much better way we have here one module that comes after exposure with which we can influence the brightness of the different areas uh, in, the f in the photo which means tone equalizer is a tool which separates our photo to the areas of so to different areas of the similar brightnesses what that means for example the first separation I will turn it off for a moment we have here on the window one brightness area then for example the second brightness area could be this uh, reflection on the door which is quite similar for with in the brightness with reflection here then we have a next area that will be that um, that wall that orangey wall and so on and, and, and at the end uh, the darkest area is the, this one here with a table and cabinet in the background so this could be another area with similar brightness so uh, what tone equalizer does is practically a slice that that uh, the brightness of our image into those areas with similar brightnesses so we have here a lot of um, sliders with which we can influence each of these area separately brightness uh, add brightness or remove the brightness or darken it and uh, the tone equalizer uses special internal mask for that separation now we will see how that mask look like if we go to the masking tab and don't touch anything just turn that internal mask on to be able to see how uh, tone equalizer has separated our photo to that uh, different areas with similar brightnesses so for example we have here you can see that uh, <coughs> that part here of the reflection one area then we have this area here this area cannot be reached at the moment we will talk about that later and so on and at least uh, at least last one is that uh, that area here but as you can see uh, the mask is quite blurry and that had a special purpose two purposes one is we want if you want to influence one of these areas we don't want to have a harsh harsh edges there for example if i want to darken that i don't want to have the harsh edges so that the transition between that area and the next one is smooth and the second um, reason is that if we influence that uh, area in this blur uh, with this blur we don't lose the details there now we have enabled automatically enabled that uh, preservation of details so therefore you, you see that blurry image but uh, you can if you go and hovering with your mouse cursor to this special special area you can also read which kind of slider 
could be interesting to influence that particular area. For example, uh, if I hovering about this reflection there, I have about minus one or minus 0 0.9 uh, EVs here. Let's see the darkest areas are about minus f 5 EVs. And now, uh, according to this separation, we can use minus 1 or minus 5 slider to influence only those two areas. So let's try that. I will disable the mask now. Go to the symbol tab and just uh, minus one, you can also read it here. Uh, you can use, I can use now that minus, my minus one EV slider and go a little bit down. And now I have darkened that area only without influencing anything else. You can see before and after. As you can see a little bit here because that was also the area that has similar brightness like this one. And let's try now uh, the minus five one and brighten a little bit the shadows. So we go to the minus five and go up. And as you can see, I, we have now brightened only that part without influencing anything else. So we are, be, we are able now to uh, influence the brightness locally on the photo. And we can also see that in the one step, now you see uh, in the one step we have lowered the minus one can also move it manually down and we have uh, brightened minus five a little bit higher so before and after so that is how the separation of the different uh, areas of the photo with similar brightnesses uh, as made with tone equalizer. But in our case, as you can see, I will disable it again. In our case, we want to influence this one, only the highlights. And as you can see, we have here that orangey warning. I cannot reach that area now. So that internal mask, which uh, is used for separation of those areas, need to be adjusted manually. So let's try that. We go to the masking again. <clears throat> we can also turn that mask on so that we can see what is going on. And as you can see, when I go with the mouse uh, cursor there, I'm getting some values plus three zero EVs, and I have that striped cursor, so that means we are not able to reach that one. Yeah, because we have only the, the highest uh, value is plus, plus zero. So we need to adjust that mask. So we go first and try that mask exposure compensation and see if we have some improvements there. So I just click on the color picker here. Okay. There's not much ex uh, much improvement, so we need to do that manually. So I will use now that slider and go with the slider to the left. And now you can see I'm almost done, but not enough. Now I can reach with uh, minus... Uh, 0, 3, uh, minus 0, 0.5, 0, 0.6. I can use now practically that first or and second slider to darken that, but the problem is we have now the similar problem like, like by uh, highlights. We cannot reach the shadow areas because shadow areas are not now darker. Then we are able to choose uh, with our sliders, as you can see, we have minus 8.6 and we have only the minus 8 EV slider here. So we need to also to um, adjust that mass contrast compensation. Now, if I move that slider to the left, I can now compress that uh, mask and uh, now I can reach every area. 
you can see I can now reach that highlight area and also uh, shadow area because now in highlights we have minus minus uh, values minus 0 0.4 or something else which is lower than 0 and here we have minus 7.3 as the darkest which is higher than minus 8 so we are able to use those sliders <coughs> for adjustments and what kind of sliders we need to adjust we can try it with in the simple tab so we need to darken minus 0 maybe minus 1 go down and you can see also here how we are darkening only this area you see now in the, in the windows before and after we're getting dar darkened that area only but I won't suggest to use those sliders because they are too um, uh, harsh so let's move that back go to the one stop and try to use uh, those points which are practically identical with, the, with those sliders but you can move a bit more surrounding areas also so I'm not only darkening for example that uh, 0 and minus 1 but also the rest so we have a nice and smooth transition by darkening we darkening a little bit more that we need but uh, transition is nicer and you can see we don't losing the details and don't have any some any hollows or, or, or harsh edges and also for um, shadows you see now we can use minus seven point and go up and you can see I have also uh, brightened because I'm not only using this one because uh, 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 but also the next one next to them I'm brightening also the other area so I can try to adjust that if I want but in this case it could be interesting to, to brighten also the, the, the wall and now we have you can see on the waveform we have darkened our highlights there and brightened a little bit the shadows with the help of that uh, tone equalizer so that's only that's um, everything you need to know is to how to be able to adjust that mask and according to those points you can move them up and down to for that adjustment and you can also use a mouse wheel so let's do that I will disable that adjustment what I have done manually and go for example here and use the mouse wheel up and down for example here down and in shadows up and we have the similar uh, result so you don't need to uh, move those points manually but I like to move it manually because I have more precision precision there for such cases like that okay so we are done with tone equalizer so let's see what we can do next we can now <coughs> use color balance HGB to adjust a little bit of colors uh, use perceptual saturation grading to see what we get maybe global rebrands a little bit and maybe also uh, perceptual brilliance grading darken a little bit shadows only maybe something like that so we have a little bit more contrast but what I don't like is we have some yellowish cast in the walls so we need to deal with that let's try first uh, white balancing with color calibration let's see what we get oh and that's not nice we have too much blue in the highlights so let's go back with that and try to use another instance this time we'll use channel mixer for that so how the channel mixer works I have explained in the last two episodes so please watch this one I will just quick adjust those uh, colors now so I will use blue channel 
and add a little bit of input red to the blue so that I can neutralize that yellow first and then go to the red channel and remove a little bit of the red by just using input red so something like that maybe also go to the green add some red to the green and remove some green down so that we have some kind of neutral colors here and what's the next step <coughs> I could use uh, diffuse and sharpen okay let, for, let me first zoom in a little bit diffuse and sharpen module for adding a little contrast I will just use uh, default setting uh, the preset maybe adjust it a little bit to get a little bit more or that uh, uh, not too much but that local contrast and I think we also need to denoise it a little bit because we have brightened too much the shadows and we have noise there and of course uh, just preservation of the shadows here I don't want to play too much I could also use those curves here but that's not necessary for this case <coughs> let's say something like that and um, maybe maybe I can no that's enough let's say it's enough so let's see before and after let's go to the color calibration take a snapshot and go to the last step and as you can see we see him some details there we don't lose them didn't lose them and we have uh, brightened our photo quite a lot so that we can recognize all details in the background but well, maybe I should do that uh, for example if I uh, if I want to darken that little bit more I can use the next instance and tone equalizer and try that again let's try it real quick and darken a little bit the highlights more let's see something like that and now I can use one more instance to uh, get that contrast to get a higher contrast there so I can use now simple tone curve and I will also describe that procedure in one of the last episodes so please uh, watch that first so I can adjust the mask now let me see yeah and add that contrast so we have now even more details there so let's see before and after well, you see we have uh, brightened our photo uh, without losing too much details in the highlights and it looks uh, quite nice now okay well, let's try another example this will be our next photo and in this one we need to be careful because we have here some overexposed areas let me turn the overexposure indicator and in this area here we have lost green and blue channel and in this here a little bit of blue channel so that uh, need to be reconstructed but we will do that at the end of the editing because every change in exposure or in the brightness could also influence the look of those areas and first we will then turn on the noising because I'm quite sure that we will have the noise in the shadows so let's start with that and also lens correction so that we then correct a little bit the geometry and now we can start like in the last example I would like to see what we have in the room what kind of details are important so I will go to the exposure module and add exposure to my liking so that we can see every detail I think this 
this can be enough. And now we can uh, use Filmic to compress a little bit highlights and shadows. So we will use white relative exposure and bring the data <coughs> from the highlights and shadows back and also black relative exposure. And maybe also go to the look tab and relieve the, the that compression a little bit from the highlights. So now we have clean view of the room and we can now improve that further. So we'll use color balance RGB now for um, adding a little bit colors to be able to see what kind of colors we have there. And I think it's okay. We also don't need to use any white balancing because I like that uh, greenish orangey look. But um, we have lost some details, so we'll need to uh, deal with that. I can use now diffuse and sharpen first instance for local contrast and maybe one more just for the haze of the of that area. So I will only use presets here, nothing special. And now we have nice look and in every detail in the room. And I would like to lower the exposure only on this area just a little bit with help from tone equalizer. So like in the last example, we will adjust the mask first. Well, you can see what can be reached there. <coughs> okay, I think we can now reach every area. So I'll turn that mask off and just go in the area that, were, that I want to darken a little bit and use the mouse wheel for that. Just a tiny bit, not too much. We don't want to lose that rays, but now we have better definition of those rays if we darken that area a little bit. I will say something like that, maybe just a tiny bit brighten the shadows. And I will say that's enough. Now we need to deal with that uh, uh, with that overexposure and we can go to the highlights reconstruction and see what we get there. We can move that slider up and down. I don't like that bluish or magenta look. And let's see what we get with this one. Uh, uh, if you don't have enough, um, if you don't have uh, satisfactory results here, you can turn it off and try to do the reconstruction in Filmic. So let's do that. Filmic has also a reconstruction function here by reconstruct tab. So now we will adjust the mask to see what kind of area need to be influenced by that uh, algorithm. Let's say something like that. My transition a little bit higher and turn that off. And we have some magenta, so we need to um, have some more iterations for the reconstruction. And this iteration options are in the options tab. So you have here this uh, slider iteration iterations of high quality reconstruction and we will move that slider up and now we have a reconstructed or area. Those two areas are now much better. And I will say that's enough now for this case. As you can see we have brightened the photo quite a lot and not didn't lose too much details in their highlights and we have here quite nice rays so let's see before and after so let's start with color calibration take a snapshot and go to the last step <coughs> and yeah as you can see we have much better 
brightness on the whole scene and we have we can see every details and we didn't lose those, those rays so okay next one on this one I would like to show you two different approaches how to deal with the high dynamic range and first will be uh, as before so we can start or maybe with lens correction denoising whatever and now I would like to brighten a little bit of that photo to be able to see the details in the shadows so let's go up with our exposure let me see I don't know maybe like something like that and as you can see we have lost our clouds and sky and we go we need to go to filmic now to adjust that with white relative exposure and our uh, skies back with clouds and I will compress a little bit black relative exposure and as before just um, shift that mid gray a little bit to the to the uh, black so that we don't have too much compression in the highlights <coughs> and now we can go to diffuse and sharpen no no color balance excuse me go to uh, to add some saturation maybe also you perceptual brilliance creating a little bit and I think I can use also tone equalizer to bring back those shadows and highlights a bit better so we can use that again just adjust the mask and see how the mask is uh, adjusted so I think we can use it as it is now and brighten a little bit of shadows and darken the highlights a tiny bit not too much and in this case we can also use color calibration because we have a blue sky so we can darken that sky a little bit and we will have a bit more details in the clouds so I can use new instance of color calibration go to the brightness and darken the blue channel something like that and of course compensate that by brightening green or and red so just to be able to be to see a little more definition in those areas and now diffuse and sharpen we need some low contrast and I will say we're done we have all details there and highlights are not all exposed and this is uh, good so let me show you another approach so we'll now duplicate our photo and discharge dis discard history and start again and this time I will add exposure as before no. let me start with lens correction and denoising first and now I will add some exposure as before but this time I don't want to go to the filmic I can now use tone equalizer and what I will do I will adjust the mask something like that and now in advanced tab I'll do something like inversion here so that we practically have some linear part of our core something like that and as you can see we have already improved everything but it's quite flat we need some contrast there so we can go to the color balance now 
first uh, some saturation and we can now use perceptual brilliance grading to bring those contrasts back for example in shadows go down with shadows and practically we are done and we can also use diffuse and sharpen but before we do that uh, there is uh, another interesting uh, fact that you can uh, also uh, interesting option that you can use <coughs> when you go to the masking tab we have different sliders for improvement of the mask also here for example we can use filter diffusion and if we go up we can add a little bit more contrast local contrast as you can see but you need to be careful because if you do that you need to watch that you don't have any issues on the edges and some um, hellos and something like that because if you go too far you will have those problems and it's also uh, it also depends on the scene if that works or not or not how how you can improve that <coughs> but you also have here beside filter diffusion you can also use smoothing diameter to improve it even better or of course also edges refinement so feel free to experiment a little bit with that oh, I don't want to go <coughs> excuse me I don't want to go too much in the details here because uh, we can maybe I can make one uh, extra episode for that but in this case this makes no sense to talk too much but this also uh, is nice uh, possibility to to improve the things okay now we can go we can add a little bit more um, saturation I will say and I don't think we need to use diffuse and sharpen at all because we have enough local contrast there so let's see before and after so go to color calibration take snapshot and as you can see we have improved our photo quite nicely without losing any details in highlights and shadows okay so let's try next one this one is quite interesting example because in this case we don't need to do too much uh, brightening here because we have clearly uh, interesting subject here and that is uh, those nicely illuminated uh, rocks or cliff and we have also nice framing by the dark part the parts of the photo those um, mountains here and also the sky so we'll try to enhance that and we don't need to brighten the whole picture so uh, I think we need even more contrast here so let's try to do that um, I will denoise for the first maybe lens correction and then I think we could go a little bit up with exposure but not too much we don't want to go to the edge and now we can use color balance NGB add some colors and see what we have what we get and I can also use perceptual brilliance grading here the shadows to darken practically the shadows maybe add a little bit of uh, highlights there so that we have that nice contrast oh, maybe a bit of global vibrance and a touch of global chroma and now I will also like to darken a little bit the sky so we can use color calibration new instance uh, use the brightness tab and darken the blue channel so that we get there that uh, sky uh, darker and of course compensate that by adding a little bit brightness to the red channel and I would like to improve the colors also so I will use now a channel mixer for example I would like to add some blue 
maybe remove a touch of red by using red channel let me see or even oh, let me try this one maybe something like that <coughs> and I would like to enhance the darkness in the sky even more so I could you try to use color lookup table we have here possibility to yeah to choose blue and now we have a nice definition in the sky a nice framing of that middle part a nice illuminated uh, cliff so I think we don't need to do anything else we have enough contrast and we have enough illumination that we see some details on the other parts of the photo but uh, uh, they are dark enough to be able to ha have that nice framing of the middle part of the photo which is that main subject so yeah I think we can I can leave with that I think I could give give even more saturation maybe less in the highlights let me see just a tiny bit more improvement in the colors yeah and I will say we're done we don't need any uh, additional uh, contrasts or local contrast because we have enough information there <coughs> so let's see before and after color calibration take a snapshot and go to the last step and as you can see we have quite nice improvement without brightening that photo we have uh, practically darkened the area <coughs> and through the darkening that f that framing uh, we have got a quite nice depth of the scene okay I think uh, this is enough for this episode and all those photos that I have uh, all those raw files that I have edited here in this episode can be found on the signatureedits.com I'll put the link in the description so you can try it on your own and thank you for watching and till the next time